This right here is me playing Ori and the Blind Forest on my new gaming console, which is quite different than your typical PlayStation Switch or Xbox. In fact, it's just a laptop? That's right, if you have an old computer, no matter the form factor, instead of being worthless junk that's just stuffed away in your closet, with the power of Linux, we can create a fully functional gaming console that can play PC games, watch YouTube videos and be used in fun and creative ways that just wouldn't be possible with anything else. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create something like this yourself. For demonstration, what we have here is a 10 year old Acer Aspire E1 laptop with a 4th gen Intel dual core CPU, a dedicated AMD GPU, 6GB of DDR3 RAM and a dying battery which you can't really find any good replacements anymore. The reason on why I'm using this laptop in particular is because it basically comes with everything that you would expect from a modern gaming console. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, an HDMI port and a second display if that's something you want to use. If your PC is missing something, then you can get cheap adapters literally anywhere. Starting off, the first thing that we'll need is a USB stick or a similar storage device that we will use to flash an operating system onto this PC. Now what we are going for is something like SteamOS on the Steam Deck. And while many in the online community direct you to something like Chimera OS, it's actually not that great of a choice right now as it's only really compatible with AMD GPUs. The distro that I currently recommend instead is Nobara, and to be more precise, the Home Theater PC Edition, which not only provides support for AMD and Intel, but also Nvidia, with already pre-installed drivers, though it should be noted that you should still check if your GPU is actually supported. Otherwise, go ahead and download the version that is best applicable to your system. Afterwards, we need to flash the downloaded ISO file onto our USB stick. I personally recommend the Fedora Media Writer for this, since not only is it reliable, but you can also revert the stick back to its origin after the installation is done. Now we can go ahead and plug our flashed USB stick into our new console and try to find a boot menu. You can either search for it online if it even exists on your mainboard or change the boot order in the UEFI. Some common keys to get into it are Escape, F2, F12 or Delete. Just hammer them as soon as you start your PC and you should be good to go. When installing Nobara, it is also important that you deactivate Secure Boot, because its custom optimized kernel is not being signed. Then we can go ahead and quit it and the PC should now boot the operating system that is saved on our USB stick instead of the one that is installed locally on the device itself. Once it's finished booting up, we can set up Nobara by selecting a language, choose a time zone and keyboard layout. For the partition part, if you have several disks in your system, choose the one that is either the fastest or which already had an operating system on it. When you are coming from Windows, it's the one that looks like this. Then we go ahead and select Erase Disk, which will make sure that Nobara is the only operating system on this drive and erase everything else. Then we can fill out this form, leave auto login enabled since this is supposed to be a console, click on next and install. This can take quite a while and you need to restart your PC afterwards. Now on most UEFI configurations, Nobara should now just boot up. However, if you're stuck in an installer loop, then you might need to adjust the boot order manually again. Right, so when you first boot up your system, depending on your system configuration, you should be able to boot straight into Steam and log in like you would on a Steam Deck. In here you can connect to your Wi-Fi, add Bluetooth controllers, adjust your screen and audio settings and everything your heart desires. But what if you want to add games that are not on Steam or watch YouTube for example? If you are currently in this so-called Gamescope session, then on the left side click on Steam, Power and switch to Desktop. This will then load you into a regular KD Plasma Desktop session. And if Gamescope didn't load in the first place, then this is also the place where you would end up eventually. So some laptops with hybrid graphics or a very outdated GPU like this one don't really like Gamescope anymore. And trying to fix it can take ages. So your best bet here is to use the big picture mode of Steam instead. It's essentially the same experience and since we are using it as a stationary console on a TV, we are not really missing out anything. Anyway, back to third party games and launchers. The easiest method to install them is Lutris, which is already pre-installed on your system. Lutris is essentially its very own game launcher, whereas you can select several popular game launchers or add more games and tools via the inbuilt search functionality. 
Once a game is installed, you can easily add it to Steam as a third party game and it will now show up in game or big picture mode. And you can also do the same with web apps. For this to work, we're going to need a Chromium based browser like Google Chrome, Brave, Edge, etc. Now, since Nobara doesn't really have a nice software store like other distros, the way how I install apps is to open up Firefox or later on a different browser if you want, then head over to Flathub and download apps this way. By simply opening the file, you should be able to install it straight away. Right, so after you've installed a Chromium based browser, you want to head over to YouTube or some other site and press this little icon to install it. If a site does not have this icon, then you can go to the three dots in the top right, save and share or on some browsers under more tools and install the site this way. Now open up Steam and add a non-Steam game to your library, whereas you can select the installed app. With the controller icon on the right, you should also be able to select a controller navigation mode that mimics a mouse and keyboard. And there you go! You now have successfully made a gaming console out of your old PC. Now my example with a 10 year old laptop is quite of extreme and it really shows if you want to truly use game mode, since it just won't work due to hardware limitations. But hey, from the overall experience, the big picture mode works just fine. For this device in particular, I eventually went with a regular desktop Nobara installation, which comes with less of a hassle, but you can choose essentially any desktop Linux distro. On a bit more recent hardware, and especially on desktop PCs, having to use the big picture mode instead of game scope should not occur at all. And you basically get a, well, Steam machine that can be extended with Lutris and web apps, but also custom play styles. If you are into emulation, then you can use many different controllers that wouldn't be supported on other consoles, have access to a huge library of PC games, and since it's essentially just a computer, do anything in between. And you should definitely give it a shot before you get rid of your old PC. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then make sure to check out our membership program, which features exclusive bonuses, as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. I also want to hear about your thoughts on turning a PC into a gaming console, so make sure to also leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.